Look at this map. Africa is 14 times the size of Greenland. Yet, Greenland looks huge in comparison to Africa. Russia is 6,400 kilometers across, while Africa is 7,200 kilometers across. Yet, you wouldn't tell it from this map. What is going on? Why is Africa so misrepresented on the map? Let me explain. First, let us get something out of the way. The planet Earth, this pale blue dot that we all call home, is a sphere. Actually, the correct shape is an oblate spheroid or an oblate ellipsoid. That is because it bulges at the equator, slightly squished at the poles. This is because of the huge forces that result from the Earth's rotation. For good measure, let me just throw this in here. The shape of the Earth has been established for hundreds of years. Social media is full of crazy conspiracy theories. Like I said in one of my previous videos, the distrust of authority and the distrust of well-established scientific facts, it's just appalling. It just blows my mind. In 1519, a Portuguese-born explorer by the name Magellan circumnavigated the Earth. He was the first scientist to accurately describe the shape of the Earth as spherical. This is considered by many as one of the most important events in history for its scientific, social economic, political, philosophical, and theological consequences. Before this momentous discovery, the shape of the Earth was probably deduced from whatever religious beliefs and local folklore that people had at the time. And who could blame them? There was really no practical way to find out. Why would the Earth be any other shape, such as flat, when the Moon, the Sun, and all the other planets are actually spherical? Makes no sense, right? If for some strange unknown reason you still doubt the shape of the Moon or the Sun, just look up. Duh! If the Earth was any other shape, we wouldn't have GPS, we wouldn't have satellites, and aviation as it is today would not exist. Now that that is out of the way, let us move on to maps. This is the problem. How do you represent a 3D spherical planet on a 2D piece of paper? This problem bothered many people for centuries, especially the early explorers who needed good maps for navigating the oceans. So some clever scientists came up with a way of projecting the three-dimensional shape of the Earth onto a two-dimensional piece of paper. The best known example of this was a map made by a European cartographer by the name Maketa in the 16th century. To keep longitude lines straight and maintain the 90 degree angle between the latitude and the longitude lines, the Maketa projection uses varying distances between the latitude lines away from the equator. As a result, the Earth's poles and land masses closest to them are distorted. This distortion stretches land masses like Greenland and Europe, and they appear much bigger than places that are close to the equator such as South America and Africa. Although this map distorts the sizes of the continents, it was a useful tool in navigating the oceans in those times, and it accurately preserved the shapes of continents and countries as they actually are. The Mercator projection makes countries in the mid-latitudes look small, while countries at the poles look huge. Because of its ease of understanding, and the fact that it preserves the shapes of continents and countries accurately, the Makita projection was adopted into the official school system. That is the map that you and me were taught in school. This is also the map that is used by all the big companies that make navigation equipment like Google Earth and Apple Maps, precisely because it maintains the shapes of countries and continents, even down to the smallest scales. Google Maps cleverly tweaked their maps in 2018 so that on the large scale, they show the Earth as a globe, but on the smaller scale, like in the city view, the Maketa projection is still used to this day. I guess the early European settlers were not really bothered by the inaccuracies of the Maketa projection because it made their countries look a little bit bigger, so there wasn't any problem with it. Side note, while I was researching this topic, I wondered, were there any African sailors back then? Did any Africans sail the oceans, say in the 16th century? Has this ever been part of the African history? 
or maybe was it just wiped out by the colonizers as they wiped out everything else? Please leave a comment. One of the big problems of the Mercator projection is that it enlarges certain countries, making them seem huge and intimidating. Some have even argued that perhaps this map projection reinforced the thought of self-importance held by the imperial European nations that later colonized many parts of the world. Indeed, there is a link between maps made during periods of colonial dominance and the agenda of a country. Specifically, these maps were used to emphasize the power of the Europeans and the differences between them and the various people that they subordinated. World maps from 1569, which use the mathematically defined Mercator projection, set the European metropolis in relation to its overseas empire. Trade routes between the Great Britain Empire dominated the map, with Britain itself at the center of the world. The world maps that prevail today have been embedded deep in our imagination thanks to our school system. They continue to prevail despite many challenges to their fairness and accuracy because they underpin the ongoing and perhaps accurate Anglo-European American presumption that the world belongs to them and pivots around this geocultural axis. I mean, most Americans think that Africa is one country. The term power of representation and representation of power sums up quite well how maps and the rise of the Western nation-state system, and with that, empire and colonialism. For example, a huge red USSR seems intimidating as compared to a small, less powerful Africa. On our actual planet, Africa is bigger than China, India, the United States, and Europe combined. Brazil, for example, doesn't look that large on the Mercator projection, but it is bigger than the United States and almost as large as Canada. Another weakness of this projection is that it makes some continents seem to appear further south than they are actually are. For example, in many people's minds, Africa seems to be almost entirely found in the southern hemisphere. But in reality, two-thirds of Africa is actually north of the equator. Africa extends farther northwards than Norfolk, Virginia in the United States. Several other projections have tried to address this problem. For example, the Gull Peters projection tries to map all continents of the world such that they have the correct sizes relative to one another. However, However, it achieves this goal by distorting the shapes of continents, making most of them, such as Africa, seem stretched out. Some school systems around the world, such as the Boston School System, has adopted this map projection to help students familiarize themselves with the relative sizes and continents as they actually are. Other map projections include the Robinson Projection, also known as the Compromise, because although the sizes of the continents are correct, the shapes don't look quite right. The Dimaxion map projection that I think speaks for itself, the Sino Mulwid projection that is seen here trying really hard to maintain the fidelity of area, the Gudes Homolocene projection, also known as the Orange Peel, that regains the accuracy of country sizes by adding interruptions between the oceans, the Cylindrical Equal Area projection that sacrifices shape to get the correct proportional size. Sadly, there is no such thing as a perfect map. It is impossible to accurately project the spherical earth onto a two-dimensional piece of paper. However, I think that getting a clear understanding of what these map projections mean, to see Africa as the giant, truly magnificent continent it truly is, can help us to do better for our continent in the future. I would like to thank all my friends who have taken the time to give me advice and criticism on my videos. I really appreciate it guys all my sources are linked below thank you so much for liking and subscribing by the way did you know that bananas are radioactive i made a whole video about it click on the pop-up banner to find out more this is the african scientist science from an african perspective